Primal Chaos. Hey guys, Primal Chaos here, welcome to the channel. Some of you might be pretty new. Uh, some of you might have just jumped on board around the time I started to discover Ren and his sort of music. I am, to this day, still very unfamiliar with Chinchilla. I was incredibly impressed by what I saw in that video. Uh, but I really have no concept of who she is as an artist, so this will definitely be a cold reaction. I believe that Chalker Outlines probably falls more into the camp of what Ren does. And, you know, she was just an exceptionally appropriate uh, collaboration on that piece. Uh, but I suspect that there's more to Chinchilla. I think that she might have her own little bubble and her own flavor and everything like that. Um, at least just, just basically from imagery wise, like I haven't heard anything more than Chalk Outlines. I've seen a lot of, you know, press photography style things and stuff. And I just feel like she's got a different energy to what I suspect. So this could go in literally any direction. I wouldn't be surprised if she was a heavy metal artist. I, I really honestly don't know. So I'm, I'm color me curious, right? I know that she just released this the other day. People have been telling me that it's charting like crazy and that, which is again, phenomenal because she's an independent artist. And when you have even somewhat of a, of, of, of a casual understanding of what goes on behind the scenes of a top 40 artist as far as what it takes to get that person to chart, to be in the zeitgeist, you know, there's publicists and there's, there's teams of people. There's an army of people at major labels whose job it is to make sure that every artist on their roster has, it becomes a household name. And when you're getting by just on the strength of, you know, a, a viral video or two, um, it's, it's unheard of. Like, I mean, I mean, obviously it happens, but the machine of the music industry is set up to almost discourage that kind of thing. It's, it's all, you know, radio slots are bought and paid for and all of this sort of skullduggery goes on behind the scenes where it makes there not a lot of space for somebody who's a purely an independent artist to, to actually make it and to get somewhere. And so that's part of the reason why Ren and Chinchilla um, are so interesting because their success is purely 100% due to their ability to connect with their audience on some sort of a level, an emotional level or, you know, or something like that. I suspect it's, it's purely an emotional level. And so that's what makes this more and more compelling for me to check out because that they, they, both of them are anomalies. And it's, it's just, it's, it's an exciting time to see kind of like um, a, a shakeup happening, you know, potentially. So anyway, I've talked too long. Let's check out Little Girl Gone um, again. No concept about what this is going to be, but we'll, I guess we'll find out. Here we go. Say that I cannot, did I quite hear mess with the wrong bitch? So I heard you're back in town. <laughs> and have wow, a okay. to be a man. You get off talking down to the little man. Time you get what you deserve. Wow. You're so fucking stupid. Been a while since my head was this polluted. Lucky I know my own Okay, okay, before we get to the next part, okay, I got a lot to say. There, there was, hmm, yeah, it's, it's not too far removed from what I suspected. It, you know, I expected it to have quite a lot of attitude. Um, the song is really minimalist, and it, which is great because, or, or I, sh I should say, the the arrangement musically is, 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 is simplistic and allows her to sort of do some awesome trickery showing off a lot of her vocal flex, you know. So like things like those intro harmonies and things like that. Um, I suspect this is going to go on a bit of a journey of vo vocal textures, you know, some spoken word sort of things. I could hear that sort of coming in the next part. Um, but yeah, it's kind of got an edginess that like, you know, you're si similar. I hate to draw comparisons between artists, but my first impression is there's a little bit of a Billie Eilish kind of, you know, modern interpretation of pop where, you know, there's some flair and some flavor to it, even though it might sound simple there's some interesting harmonization um, going on in, in the choices of the chords or, or, you know, whatever's happening underneath as well as vocal harmonies and things like that. There's a lot of thought going into something that sounds pretty open um, 
and uh, and and I mean I don't want to use the word simplistic sounding because it's not. There's a lot going on, uh, but it sounds it's 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 got this effortless space in it. They're not just throwing everything in there just to make clutter for no reason. I guess to try and bamboos bamboozle you into thinking that it's good, right? Uh, I'm going to jump back a fair way because I just in fact you know what let's go back to the start because I want to hear those harmonies again. <laughs> It's it's already like anthemic and it's like hasn't even started. That was nice. So hang on, check this out. This is a little production thing that is, is again, it's it's one of those things where these if these effects can be heard, um, when you're not paying attention, then there's there's too much of them, right? They're keeping things really sort of spacious, and and I'm looking for a better word than just open and Spartan, right? Um, but like, listen to when she says, when she says "Wow," there's a delay just on "Wow," and it doesn't continue on. They didn't just throw a delay on the entire track. Delay being an echo for for people who, who don't know. Forget what you deserve. Wow, you're so See that? <laughs> Like how they double down in this part. That's really cool. Um, okay, so that, that little sort of shout, I guess you could say it's a shouted sort of part. Um, she's got like a cool, a really cool sort of subtle groove to it that sort of makes it sort of bop. But then that last part with the triplets, bop, 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 You know, it just sort of brings home that whole section with kind of, it just ramps up the energy, you know, without taking it to another level. It just sort of flows on, but the texture of it changes and it just keeps... The, the the magic of this is that everything that she does, um, it just it it just throws little interesting things in, so you you don't get bored. You could very easily produce this track in a way that's absolutely boring, um, where you could just have a simple backing that's just repeating that sort of motif. Um, I don't know I know what it is. It was something like, and then it's like a, a, no no sorry. It's just that sort of harmonic motif. That's that's kind of what she's going for. But you could just have something going in a loop doing that and she could just sing her parts and rap or whatever it is over the top. And no one would be any the wiser. They'd just be like, okay, pop track. But there's there's a certain um, elegance to this where they're just throwing in just enough cool, interesting little tidbits of sound to just sort of keep you guessing, you know? Excellent. Um, there was something else I wanted to talk to as well, I speak to. Oh, yeah. So this is the other thing too. It's like... the. <laughs> The tension building, right? So you you do this part. I mentioned earlier, they double down this part where a lot of I think a lot of producers would just go through that loop once, and then it sort of as it ramps up ba, 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 towards the end, then you'd pop into the big chorus. But they do the opposite. They draw that out to two two sort of cycles of that that sort of progression or that that. Part. And then what do they do? You can hear it building up to a chorus. Here we go. One, two, three, four. And, and just, it doesn't. <laughs> and then we cut out to basically nothing, like a complete breakdown, vocals only. And not only that, a different, a, a change of vocal timbre as well, right? So you've got... She's right up in the mic. It's almost ASMR. You can hear like her, her, her mouth movements and stuff like that because it's really intimate, right? And then... And then we're going to get the payoff, right? There it is. And 
And again. Honey, I've changed so much since I last saw ya. Whatever the chord progression is. And again, you've got the opportunity. Most people, when they go to a chorus, like you'll typically keep your verses pretty stable and then you'll you'll blow out to like a very harmonic chorus that might move around a progression or, you know, have a lot of movement. But literally, that's like three progressions of just, you know, just, just sitting on C sharp and does that like three times, you know, when they could have easily used three different chords there. And then you've got that sort of like that cadence that sort of goes... um. You know, just to sort of give it a variation at the end. So this, this, it feels like this whole thing is an exercise in subverting expectations and sort of making, keeping you on the edge of your seat the whole time, all the way down to the fundamental note choices in the backing track. Excellent production. Again, like I know I'm stopping a lot, right? But the, I'm just excited. <laughs> you gotta understand. You know, if I sat there and just nodded my head to the reaction, you'd be disappointed. And if I pause too much, people are disappointed. But you know what? I'm having fun. I'm gonna do it my way, right? So again, you may not have even noticed the textures that are going on in her in her yelled sort of part here, right? There's there's like literally she's double tracked, right? She's got a few voices doing that sort of part up there and then you've got like other parts that are just sort of like swelling on certain notes to just accent them almost like like harmonies harmonies i suppose and then there's just some random yell in the background like yeah you know like it's it's just it's got that sort of crunk attitude of just like in your face if there was a dance routine to this it would have just so much aggressive energy right but just l l try and try and separate um her, her lead vocal and just listen to everything else that she's she's doing in the different layers of the vocal. Yeah, mess with the wrong bitch in the wrong era. I've been a work and I got my badge of honor. Honey, I've changed so much since I last saw ya. Hands on my head, help every day. You ding ding with my hand rings for my day. Cause I've had the punch backed into a corner. Come at me. And different inflections, like she's, yeah, I'm backed into a corner. And then she's got backing vocals that go into the corner, you know, so where she's going down, they're going up. It's like she's doing um, choral harmonies, but in, in kind of like this spoken word version of it. You know, she's taking the concepts that she knows as being a, a singer and layering vocals and putting it into this sort of in your face attitude, sort of spoken wordy kind of um, aesthetic. Right? And she keeps the first one of these simple. This is where it kicks in. Those triplets again. Snap me like bamboo. me into the soul of your Wish I could bottle the Cause I drink up that look on your face. So you wanna fight me? Are you big enough? Kick the back of my knee. Are you serious? You keep on trying, but I like your blood on my teeth. Just a little too much. So bite me, slap me around the face. Now I'm twisting your arm. She actually has a, a really nice breathy tone for her harmonized parts. And she's, again, she's orchestrating them so beautifully. Hey, I you, you hear, like those, those sort of lower harmony layers, like chorals like, Ooh, in the background, they're sort of there to, she's being kind of bold and rambunctious up top, but then you have these really sweet harmonies underpinning it that sort of, um, I guess they highlight it a bit more, right? Since I saw you, hands up my head, every day you ding, 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 ding,
Mario. Yes. <laughs> Look, I didn't know what to expect at all. Um, but, you know, I mean, you can tell from the reaction I was not disappointed, right? Uh, look, you know, I've, I've mentioned, you know, traveling through the the catacombs of like your K-pop and J-pop and things like that. Um, I, I actually haven't, I don't know if I've done a lot of Western pop music. Um, I've done, you know, a lot of things like acapella groups and a little bit of country and some, you know, some more adult contemporary sort of pop and things like that. But I don't know that I've done a whole bunch of just general Western pop music, but you know, in the reactions where I do a lot of, you know, like your BTS and things like that, um, I've mentioned many times that for me personally, the, the, the pop music I like has to have punch and attitude to it. I like to have it, um, in your face, aggressive. Um, I mean, it's, it's probably part of the reason that I like metal and things like that, because, you know, you want something to drive along to and punch the dashboard. Um, and don't get me wrong, there's, there's always space for, you know, chilled out ballads and beautiful things like, you know, your Jeff Buckley's of the world and things like that. But, um, for me personally, if it's going to be a pop song, I want it to have loud percussion and just amazing vocal stabs and cool rhythmic sort of turns and um, things that subvert expectations because you can you can write pop music by numbers really easily, um, but it's the ones that sort of change the rules and do their own thing that tend to really stand out. You know, the best songs by guys like Backstreet Boys and NSYNC are the more edgy and aggressive ones by a long shot, at least in my opinion anyway. And so, you know, not to put Chinchilla in that category. I mean, she's clearly, <laughs> she could beat the Backstreet Boys up, let's face it, <laughs> you know. Um, but, you know, I, I love the concept of the lyrics and everything. It, it sort of sit, it sits comfortably in what I perceive to be her aesthetic. As far as, you know, little girl got a gun from a gangster, little girl gone got a gun from a gangster, which is, I mean, just the cadence of that sentence is just so beautifully lyrical, right? The way it rolls off the tongue, it almost has its own energy. You know, you can't sort of sing that in a way that doesn't sound kind of hip hoppy and edgy, right? And then, you know, it's like you take the, the, the dichotomy of the concept of a sweet little girl and then you give her attitude and make it dangerous. And who doesn't love that, right? That's Hit Girl, if you know, from from the, um, uh, the whatever those movies were, <laughs> you know. Um, but yeah, it's it, you know, this was just really cool. It's chock full of attitude. It's incredibly competent production. I'd love to know who was involved, if she does a lot of the work herself or if she's got like maybe a producing partner or something um, in, in this sort of thing. Uh, I did notice the guitar parts were kind of chimey, Telecaster Stratty kind of stuff, right? It's like single coil guitar stuff, which is a very Ren thing. Um, so, I mean, I don't know. Fill me in the comments. You know, I, I, this channel is nothing if not I'm asking you guys the questions, right? I'm learning. I'm the new guy. So fill me in um, because this is, uh, this is world-class pop production. And, you know, being that it was sort of done you know, in the realm of, of purely being, um, independent, it's, it's a, it's a landmark song really, when you think about it. Um, mm. so yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know kind of where this is, where this is at, like how it, how it exists, you know, it's the same thing. Um, and I know this is the, this is a chinchilla reaction video, but uh, you know, I mean, being that my only real connection is with her and Ren, I have to bring up Ren from time to time. And I feel like, you know, he, he's the same in that he does it. He seems to be, his talent seems to be bigger than the opportunities that he should have at the point in his career where he is. And that's what makes him, I think, stand out. And I think that's what makes Chinchilla stand out. Like, I know, I know she's toured with major artists and stuff in the past too. She's not just some chick that they found on the street and suddenly she's got a pop career. I understand that. Um, but to me, in, like in my part of the world in my zeitgeist she's she's a new artist right and and she and this this is just too good <laughs> anyway look i've waffled on too long i hope you enjoyed the reaction um i hope i didn't say anything too stupid <laughs> uh, which is always a danger but look you know thanks guys for checking this out um thank you to all the new subscribers if you haven't subscribed uh click the button and hit the bell because i'll be definitely doing some more chinchilla and definitely some more ren um, and you know, anything that's this adjacent, I'm, I'm keen to hear as well. So fill me in the comments. Let me know if you, if you can think of anything else, 
Um, even by Chinchilla or Ren that I haven't done or, or anyone else who might be a similar kind of artist that probably is, you know, maybe these guys seem to be getting the props they deserve now, but like there's probably a bunch of artists out there who, who are kind of in that point where they haven't quite cracked that yet. So let me know. I'm interested. Um, yeah. If you feel like a bright new day at all, feel free to support the channel. Just like and subscribe and, uh, you know, hit the, uh, just buy me a coffee. <laughs> I'll leave a link in the description. Or you can just hit super thanks under the video as well. That All of that really, really helps, guys. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, but that's basically it. Thanks again. Stay primal. I'll catch you on the next one.